Hello everyone. So in the last class, we were discussing about module 4 that is measurement, measurement system, transducer, intermediate modifying and terminating devices. So in the last class, we have discussed uh, different types of mechanical transducers. Now in this session, we will discuss so different types of electrical transducers and working principle of electronic transducer. Okay, here the table shows the different types of electrical transducers. So we have mainly five types. So the resistance transducer, inductance transducer, capacitance transducer, then photoelectrical transducer, piezoelectrical transducer. Now first one, so the resistant transducer. So the resistant transducer, so before discussing about the resistant transducer, so first let us discuss some basic principle of resistant transducer. Okay, here the resistance of a conductor is given by rho which is equal, so R which is equal to rho L divided by A where rho which is equal to resistivity of a conductor, L which is equal to length of a conductor and A which is equal to cross sectional area of conductor. So okay, here the resistance depends on the length of conductor, area of conductor and resistivity. When the length changes or when the area changes, the resistance of conductor also changes. Okay, here the length which is changed, so due to application of force or area which is changed due to application of force or pressure. Now let us discuss the mechanically varied resistant transducer. So figure shows sliding contact resistant transducer. So sliding contact resistant transducer, it is an example for mechanically varied resistant transducer. So now let us discuss the working of mechanically varied resistant transducer. So the figure shows the sliding contact, so the mechanically varied resistant transducer. Okay, here it consists of resistant element slider and guide rod. This slider slides along the guide rod and it has contact with so resistant element. So okay, here the slider which moves over the resistant element. When the mechanical displacement is applied, the slider moves over the resistant element and hence the effective length of the so the resistant element changes. When the length changes, the resistance also changes since the resistance depends on the length. So therefore, when the length changes, so due to movement of slider, the resistance of this element also changes. The change in resistance which can be measured and it can be taken as the mechanical, so measurement of mechanical displacement. So this is the working of sliding contact, so resistance transducer. Okay, here when the mechanical displacement is applied to the slider, slider which moves over the resistant element. And hence the effective length of the resistant element changes. When the length changes, the resistance of this wire also changes. When there is so the change in resistance, it can be measured. The change in resistance can be measured and it can be taken as measurement of mechanical displacement. The second one, thermally varied resistant transducer, as the name indicates, okay, here the resistance, so the resistance changes when the temperature changes. Okay, here the example for thermally varied resistant transducer thermistors. Okay, here we have so different types of thermistor B type, rod type and disc type. Okay, here so when the temperature changes, the resistance also changes. The change in resistance in the thermistor, it can be measured and it can be taken as so measurement of temperature. So thermistor, okay, here thermistor, when the resistance changes, sorry, when the temperature changes, resistance also changes. The change in resistance in the thermistor, it can be measured and it can be taken as measurement of temperature. So this is about the mechanically varied resistance transducers. So next we will discuss inductant types electrical transducer. So in the inductance transducer, so we have self-inductance transducer and mutual inductance transducer. So figure shows single coil self-inductance transducer. So these transducers are used for measurement of mechanical displacement. <coughs> okay, here it consists of a coil which is wound on an iron core. And here we have an armature. A small air gap is maintained between iron core and armature. <coughs> now, when the mechanical displacement is applied to the armature, the armature moves closer to the iron core. And hence, the air gap changes. When the air gap changes, the self-inductance of coil also changes. This self, the change in self-inductance of coil which can be measured and it can be taken as measurement of displacement or force. Because the change in self-inductance of coil, so it directly proportional to the 
applied mechanical displacement. Okay, here when the mechanical displacement is applied, the armature means the so the armature moves closer to the iron core, and then the air gap changes. When the air gap changes, the self inductance of coil also changes. The change in self inductance of coil is can be it can be measured and it can be taken as measurement of mechanical displacement or force. So this is the single coil self inductance transducer. Next, in the mutual inductance transducer, we have two coil and three coil type. So the figure shows so two coil mutual inductance transducer. So these transducers are also used for measurement of mechanical displacement, mechanical displacement or force. Okay, here we have two coil, power coil and pickup coil. So which are owned on iron core. So this is iron core. Okay, here we have an armature. Here also a small air gap is maintained between armature and coil. Now, when the mechanical displacement is applied to the armature, the armature moves closer to the coil, iron core and hence the mutual inductance of pickup coil also changes. So the change in mutual inductance of this coil, it can be measured and it can be taken as so measurement of mechanical displacement. So this is about the working, working principle of so two coil, so mutual inductance transducer. So the next one, so three coil. So the, Three coil example LVDT linear variable differential transformer or transducer. So in the module 2 we have already discussed the working construction working of LVDT. So you watch so videos so related to module 2. So next we will discuss the working of capacitive transducer. So before discussing the working of capacitive transducer first let us discuss so what is capacitor and capacitance. So capacitor so it stores the electrical energy and it gives the same electrical energy to the circuit when necessary. <coughs> Capacitor consists of two conducting surfaces so and sub so separated by dielectric so insulator. The conducting surfaces are called as plates and the insulating material is called as dielectrical medium. Now let us define capacitance. Capacitance is nothing but the ability or capacity of a capacitor to store electricity is called as capacitance. So which is equal to epsilon A divided by D where A is the area of plates and D is the distance between two plates. Now the capacitance of a capacitor depends on the area of plates and the distance between two plates. When the area changes or when the distance changes, capacitance of a capacitor also changes. The area or distance, so which may be changed due to application of pressure or force. Now, let us discuss the working of capacitive transducer. Okay, here the working of this capacitive transducer based on the changing the distance. Okay, here capacitance of a capacitor depends on area and distance. When the distance decreases capacitance increases and vice versa when the distance changes capacitance of a capacitor also changes so next let us discuss the working of so capacitive transducer so based on the changing the distance okay here we have fixed electrode acts as the one plate of capacitor and diaphragm acts as the another plate the fixed electrode and diaphragm separated by small distance d now the pressure to be measured is applied onto the diaphragm. So since the diaphragm is flexible material, it undergoes deflection. So when the diaphragm undergoes deflection, okay here, the distance between the fixed electrode and diaphragm changes. When the distance changes, that is the distance decreases. When the distance decreases, so capacitance increases. The change in capacitance, it can be measured and it can be taken as the measurement of pressure. So this is the working of capacitive transducer. So based on the changing the distance between two plates, when the distance changes, okay, here when the distance between the two plates changes, so as per this formula, when the distance changes, capacitance also changes. The change in capacitance, it can be measured and it can be taken as the measurement of pressure because, okay, here the, when the pressure is applied onto the diaphragm, the distance get changed. So when the distance gets changed, the capacitance also changes. This change in capacitance can be measured and it can be taken as measurement of pressure. So this is the working principle of capacitive transducer. So next we'll discuss the working of piezoelectrical transducer. So piezoelectrical crystal is a material which produces electrical potential or voltage when it is subjected to force or pressure. 
So example for piezoelectrical crystal, quartz and lithium sulphate. Now let us discuss the working of piezoelectrical transducer. So figure shows the working principle of piezoelectrical transducer. So okay, here when this piezoelectrical trap, so when the piezoelectrical material is subjected to force or pressure, so then corresponding output voltage is produced. So this output voltage is proportional to the applied force or pressure. So this output voltage is easily measured by using simple voltage measuring instruments. And that can be taken as the measurement of force or pressure. So when this piezoelectrical crystal is subjected to mechanical force or pressure, so correspondingly, so we will get some output voltage. That output voltage is directly proportional to the applied force or pressure. So the output voltage, it can be easily measured by using voltage measuring instrument and that can be taken as the measurement of force or pressure. So this is the working principle of piezoelectrical transducer. So next we will discuss the working of photoelectrical transducer. So in the photoelectrical transducer, we have photo emissive and photovoltaic transducer. So the diagram shows the working of photo emissive and photovoltaic transducer. Okay, here the photo emissive transducer consists of anode and cathode which are placed in a glass tube. Okay, here these transducers are used for, so used for measurement of intensity of light beam and wavelength of radiation. Now, so when light beam incident on cathode, so okay, here electrons are generated. The generated electrons move towards anode and then so okay, here in the circuit a small current is generated. So the generated small current which is, which is directly proportional to the intensity of incident light. So therefore the measurement of current in the circuit, so which is equivalent to the measurement of intensity of incident light. And this is the working of photo emissive transducer. Then photovoltaic transducer. So the diagram shows the working of photovoltaic transducer. Okay, here we have semiconductor material which is placed on a metal base plate and which is covered by a thin metal film. Now, so when the intense, so when the light beam, so when the, when the light beam incident on the semiconductor material, okay, here a small amount of voltage is developed. The developed voltage, so is directly proportional to the intensity of incident light and that voltage is measured. So by using voltage measuring instrument and that voltage, the measured voltage, it can be taken as the intensity of incident light. So this is the working principle of photovoltaic transducer. So next we'll discuss the working, this last one, electronic transducer. So next we'll discuss the working of electronic transducer. So as we're saying in the diagram, okay, here in the diagram, we have electronic transducer. Okay, here it consists of an electronic tube. So in the tube, we have two plates which are placed on movable arm. As we're saying in the diagram, so the movable arm extended through diaphragm at one end. Now, when the mechanical displacement is applied at one end of the electronic transducer, okay, here, so movement of arm, movement of arm takes place. So due to movement of arm, the electronic characteristics of the tube also changes. So the change in the electronic characteristics of the tube, so it can be taken as the measurement of the mechanical displacement. So this is the working of electronic transducer. So this is all about the transducer working principle. So, so far we have discussed the measurement, measurement system, so generalized measurement system, static characteristics and dynamic characteristics and we have discussed the different types of transducer like mechanical transducer, electrical transducer and electronic transducer. Thank you.